that's the way to reach uh, Europe. Thank you again for the invitation and their IATA members. Uh, it has been 10 years since uh, the events of 2011 in the Arab world, which we now call the Arab Spring. These events had consequences in the region. They also had consequences for international security. Today, I will speak about what this has meant for international security. I think this will be a good starting point for your discussions over the next few days. The Arab Spring were a series of local protests against regimes across northern Africa and the Middle East during the spring of 2011. Protests have highlighted issues that will challenge Western security for some time to come. These challenges include difficulties for democracy to take hold after popular protests, the tendency of strong men to grab power and mass migration. We also see some topics within the Western Alliance in facing these issues. These topics include the responsibility to protect versus non-intervention, tensions within NATO and burden sharing between the US and European allies. Towards the conclusion, I will visit NATO's response to deal with the fallout of the Arab Spring and its aftermath, including Norway's contributions. In most Arab countries, protests were followed by governments striking down protests, continued unrest or war. In Egypt, we saw a brief surge of democracy from 2011 to 2013, followed by a coup by the armed forces, which still hold power. In Bahrain, the government was swift to put down the protests, assisted by neighboring states, which did not want further spread of the protests. In Yemen, leadership was deposed, but the country has since been ravaged by war. In both Libya and Syria, protests led to bloody civil wars, wars that are still ongoing. Tunisia is the only country where democracy has taken hold, most likely because the country had a moderate form of dictatorship. It is interesting that Iraq saw less popular protests, possibly because it already had a form of democracy. This, has su this all suggests that a democracy seldom develops and thrives on its own. It takes time and support for it to put down roots. In the absence of democracy, we have seen strongmen grabbing power. In Bahrain, Egypt and Saudi Arabia, rulers have promised stability in return for people giving up their civil rights. In countries which, with weak democratic traditions and surrounded by conflict, this can have considerable appeal. In Syria, Assad had kept his grip on the population through 10 years of conflict portraying himself as the protector against violent extremism. An additional challenge is that the most important effort to promote stability in Syria is the Astana process, led by President, President Vladimir Putin of Russia. It is unlikely that peace talks led by an autocratic leader will address the root causes of the conflict in Syria, including the need to guarantee human rights and democracy. For many years, bad governance, poverty and population growth had caused people in the region to seek better lives in Europe. The war in Syria has caused more people to flee, and the fall of Gaddafi in Libya has opened up a route for migrants from the Sahel, Sahel region. Europe was not prepared for this development. Especially frontline states like Greece and Italy had problems with a huge number of arriving migrants, leading to the end of the so-called Dublin Agreement. This is not a security crisis. However, this mass migration towards Europe caused huge problems among EU members, which for the most part also are NATO members. For NATO and for Norway, this has several consequences, including the need to consider the responsibility to protect against the costs of doing so. In 2011, NATO led an air campaign aimed at protecting Libyan protesters against their leader, Muammar al-Gaddafi. The operation was successful in preventing civilians from being attacked and contributed to the fall of Gaddafi. However, as we know, this did not lead to national unity in Libya. While the air campaign succeeded in protecting the population, NATO member states has reflected in the on the complexity of engaging in such, such in, uh, situations. One result of our ex 
variants from Libya has been reduced will among allies to consider new interventions to save people from insurers rulers. These were the challenges. Now let us look at the strategies to contain these challenges. After more than 70 years, NATO remains the main forum for Euro-Atlantic security policy deliberation. This is because the alliance has been successful in adapting to changes in the security environment. NATO will continue to succeed in this regard uh, in the future. Neither the cause nor the consequences of the current unrest are military in nature. The main responsibility for addressing the causes rests with the affected countries. The key to this will be to guarantee basis human security for people in these countries. Access to food, health and education will be necessary. However, that will not be enough. People must also have freedom of speech, relig religious freedom, and they must be able to vote in free and fair elections. Only the countries themselves can do this with the assistance of the United Nations and development organizations. Still, there are values, valuable roles for NATO to fill, and NATO fills them. Through the Mediterranean Dialogue and the Istanbul Cooperation Initiative, NATO has regular contact with most of the affected countries. Through practical cooperation, we work to improve democratic control over their, their security forces and to increase their effectiveness. NATO has established so-called hub for the South in Naples. The hub increases our situational awareness in the Middle East and in Northern Africa. This prevents allied policymakers with an up-to-date uh, up and coherent picture. This way, NATO will be better placed to make good decisions. The Alliance is also involved in Iraq through NATO's military mission in Iraq, NMI, reflecting Iraq's status as a NATO partner nation. I would like to stress that this is an advisory mission. NATO will not replace the US-led operation inherent resolve in operations against ISIL. Norway contributes to such measures, politically and financially, through trust fund contributions. It will also provide personnel to NATO's military efforts in Iraq. For us, this is an investment in our, investment in our own security. NATO is only as strong as its members makes it. Even though the challenges from the Arab Spring takes place a long way from Norway, we contribute to NATO's response. This is because Norway's, Norway needs all members to find the alliance relevant to their security needs so that they keep investing in it. This will ensure that NATO's, NATO maintains the credibility required to support our security priorities in the high north. Apart from NATO, Norway has long-standing uh, long contributions to other peace efforts in the region, including UNSO and MF, MFO in the Middle East and MINUSMA in Mali. In operation in Henet resolve in Iraq, Nor Norwegian Army and Special Forces personnel have contributed to, defeat, to the defeat of ISIL since 2014. The pro protests uh, across Northern Africa and the Middle East in early 2011 set in motion a series of events that we have yet to see the end of. From the program, I understand you will discuss a number of these aspects over the next few days. Um, I wish you all the best with your conference. Um, these are important uh, questions. These are big questions. Listen good to the people following me because this is uh, one of the most important days you can, uh, you can uh, have in the future. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.